everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and this is Tango. So a while ago on Instagram I asked if anyone would be interested in me talking about how my second year zoology project went. I had to do a research project and write like a scientific report about it and how it went and all that. Um, and I just wanted to know if you guys would have liked or would like to hear me discuss it and I got like I think it was a hundred percent yes so that's what I'm talking about today okay so I just have my laptop in front of me just I have my paper in front of me and I just yeah to remind me of anything if I forget okay so a friend and I uh, we worked together it was a team thing where people had to work in pairs in their own groups and whatever and it was hard to think of something to do um, but we eventually decided to do insects um, or I did it on invertebrates and she did it on insects um, I'll explain <laughs> that now but yeah so we okay our university is on a nature reserve so that was already an ideal setting to do like research projects and we decided to test like density and species abundance within the reserve when it comes to insects. So first of all, kind of the things we were looking at was, like I said, species diversity, which is defined by two factors in of itself. So you get species richness, which is the number of different species in the community, like a zebra or a giraffe or an elephant. And then species evenness, which is the relative abundance of those species. So are there 50 elephants, but like 2,000 giraffes? That's what I mean by species evenness. So how we did it was we used pitfall traps, which was basically just a little plastic container. And we dug a hole in the ground and put the plastic container in the ground um, and left it overnight. And then the next morning we would come and just look what fell into the container, write it down and then release the bugs. And then we did it also in a pattern which would also test another theory. Um, so we kind of did it in a triangle, sort of. There were, there were three sites for, from the entrance of the nature reserve to a little bit further to a little bit further. And then at like site one, there'd be three pitfall traps, site two, another three, site three, another three. And one container would be like near the path way into the reserve um, the next container would be in like dense vegetation and the other one was also kind of in dense vegetation so basically with this our hypothesis was that there is going to be a difference um, in the species that we find between each site and then with also within each site because there's three buckets at each site so we're saying that there's a difference between those three buckets and within the three sites. So the whole digging the holes and planting the little traps was a fun experience. Um, not really. <laughs> we, we were so worried about ticks the whole time because ticks are just creepy and you don't want them on you and I've never been bitten by a tick and I didn't want it to happen now and thankfully it didn't but I did have a tick on me and it it was terrifying. So in our research we found seven species of invertebrates. There was the striped talk talky beetle that was easy enough to identify. Then there was another talk talky beetle but it wasn't the striped one. It was just so ever so slightly different. It was slightly elongated, wasn't as round, didn't have the stripes. So that was kind of difficult. Then we had um, a Jerusalem cricket or like a sand cricket. That was a very interesting find. We only found one of them throughout the whole experiment. Um, apparently they have a nasty bite, so I'm glad I didn't get bitten. But that was interesting. Then there were two species of ants that we found and two species of arachnid. They, we thought they were spiders, they weren't spiders. Um, which actually brings up something important. It was very difficult 
to identify these species like you know it's easy enough to identify mammals from each other you know it gets slightly more difficult identifying birds from each other if you go to insects <laughs> it's not easy and invertebrates in general so we could only narrow it down to the order of which these arachnids are in which kind of means nothing if you think about it because this order contains over 6,000 species so it can be any one of these 6,000 species is what we were saying Tang is being naughty and yeah so there were two of those arachnid species um, and we couldn't like we can see from the photo and obviously when we looked at it there were two different types of arachnids they did look different but it's <laughs> yawny can you see oh did you see him yawn it was so cute <laughs> sorry so yeah arachnids but not spiders which is very difficult to research and look up what species it is because there isn't just I don't know, like you can buy a bird book, a bird identification guide, you can buy that for mammals, you can buy that for spiders even, but not just for invertebrates in general. Not or okay, even if there is, we didn't have that. So, um, we did have an insect field guide that helped, kind of. It was still difficult getting the species names. But yes, so we got all our numbers, we did a bunch of statistic tests, um, one of them being an ANOVA test, you know, just in case any of you know what that is, we did an ANOVA test, we did a couple. Then also in my report that I wrote, I also did rank abundance curves, which you put like the relative abundance on the y-axis and the abundance rank on the x-axis, so basically you rank the species based on what the abundance was and the number one species or the one that was found in the largest number how am i explaining this so badly the insect that we found the most was one of the ant species so that was there at number one and then from that there was a sharp decline to number two which was oh that was the second ant species third was the striped talk talky and so on um yes so the the ant was a big deal okay so yeah that rank abundance curve shows that there isn't species evenness because if you remember what i said it's about all of the species kind of being present in equal numbers more or less so here we have the ant species which we had much higher um, a population size compared to the others so we've already established that it's not good species evenness then we also did yeah the ANOVA test like I said and we got our values and that and the results from that showed that there was a significant difference between each of the sites and within each of the buckets you know each of the little traps so it shows that the location does influence which species and like how much of each species we'll find as well so that was kind of the result so yes the conclusion was basically that there wasn't species evenness because of the ants um, so the community is dominated by that species and then also there was the significant difference between the species diversity between each site and between each of the containers so that's what that is and you know the takeaway message from that is that the nature reserve doesn't have a very high um, species diversity so yeah that was the conclusion but hello. but there's something else um, that was important that was 
okay we sampled four times so we went out four nights or well, four afternoons did all the buckets thing and then between the second and hello I'll put you down that's what having a parrot is like so then between the second and third sampling event um, they had gone and chopped down a lot of the trees in the reserve they were invasive species so good for that but it did disrupt our little ecosystem that we were working in so that was something that we can say the results could vary because of this and yeah that's pretty much it it was kind of interesting I mean I'm not a fan of bugs but it was interesting to see what was especially that um, sand cricket I've never seen that before and also just kind of realizing how difficult it is to identify insects Ugh, they all kind of look the same it's, oh especially like okay with the arachnids that was really difficult um, and like I said we didn't even get it down to what the species was I mean we didn't we didn't do that well with identifying the species but it was okay we could at least identify that this is one species this is another even though we don't know what the names are that at least would help us when it comes to the statistics to say this is species one this is species two etc etc so yeah that's basically what I did and then also I took notes of what some of the other people did so that I could tell you about it a lot of people a lot of people did research projects based on the intertidal zones along the beachfront and the rocky shores because it was um, something we had to do for first year and yeah so we, did, we didn't get much time to plan and come up with super creative ideas of what research project we want to do so a lot of people myself included that was just their first choice and it was like oh let's just do that we've already done it before so we'll know what to do and everything um, but yeah a lot of people did it and then it was kind of boring to watch the same research project being done over and over when the people were presenting it I mean each group did do it slightly differently um, but regardless you know it got boring after a while so yeah a lot of people did that then there was one group who was looking at food for bees because obviously humans take honey from bees so they wanted to know what could the bees eat instead and they put out like apples and other fruits I think but yeah they were trying to see which is nutritionally better for the bee I think and yeah so they did study on that there was another group who measured zooplankton in a pond another group who did or researched the um, behavior of the vervet monkeys on campus and was saying that it's different to wild monkeys because these monkeys are so used to human contact that was very interesting and also very funny there was a video of a monkey eating a lollipop but like holding the lollipop the way humans do it was really funny obviously not healthy for the monkey but funny nonetheless um, another group was identifying seabirds or they they went to the um, the beach and they just like did a bird count basically and they got some interesting results and then well, the most interesting research project I think was one looking at the parvo virus in dogs so this group uh, they went to a vet and because there's been a recent outbreak of parvo where I live so it's quite on topic to do a little research about that and the dogs who came in with symptoms of parvo were tested and then they got the um, like the results from all these dogs so they had numbers of the amount of dogs who came in with symptoms 
and then of those dogs how many were positive for parvo and also what age group they were in and their result uh, their research showed that younger puppies get parvo more often and vaccinated dogs don't get parvo as often so the results show that you need to vaccinate your dogs so that's just the tiniest bit of what it's like to study zoology you have to do research practicals um, a lot of writing scientific papers which is not that fun but it's it's part of the job so that was the second year research project that I did thank you so much for watching and let me know what you thought about the project I don't you can always give me ideas for something that I can do next year you can leave ideas because it's not easy coming up with a research project idea thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye